Orb presents the Bellicose Proxy. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And this is a real fun little episode. I hope you brought your rubbers. I put on my rubber panties because tickles make me pee pee. Mm. They turn St. Cloud into a little baby. I think this is our last St. Cloud. It and is. He's now fully baby. He's the wear baby transformation is, <laughs> has happened. Oh, ooh, wear babies in London. <laughs> oh, if you get, if you, if you suffer the wear babies gumming, then you too shall share the curse. Oh man. Baby by night. <laughs> <laughs> night baby. Uh, yeah, night too, baby. too many good concepts. Yeah. This yeah. is, this is a good time. I, I, this yeah. is just, this is just antics. It's just fun. It's it's fun. It's funny. The plot is interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this is one of my favorite uh, season seven episodes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I watched it twice. I watched it a couple weeks ago because I was in the mood. Mm-hmm. Watch again to refresh my memory. Then watch it with the commentary, and mm. it holds up. Like I was chuckling. Yeah, you know, even after a lot of exposure uh, to this. It's good stuff. It's a good idea for an episode. It's written by Doc Hammer. Originally aired mm-hmm. on September 9th, uh, twenty eighteen. Yeah, uh, and this is a monarch centric episode but it is kind of tempered because he is acting as a mentor for augustus st cloud on his first official arching yes. of billy Quizboy and the pink pilgrim yes pete white um and this of course uh is the monarch trying to you know rank up in the guild but also he accepts the job not because of any affection for st cloud uh but because it is a way for him to pester rusty again because pete and billy uh, work for him they're in the conjectural stuff yeah and uh and to give him uh brownie points to rise in the rank yeah there uh this has huge season like the best of season five energy to me yeah uh just some goofs mm-hmm. you know we're we're back in in feel good good time mode yeah you know do, do you want to listen to to fish or like the spaghetti incident or whatever <laughs> good time mode <laughs> i what you know i don't get that uh, joke. yeah just just hanging out Oh, okay. Good old times. Good old times. You know, take those old records off the shelf. Hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there's just uh there's just this fight happening with no lore and no consequence really. Mm-hmm. You know, there's... a little pit stop on the weird plot with uh M- Agent Kimberly McManus. Yes. And the peril partnership. Yeah, it briefly touches on that. Like it it's kinda tangential and present, uh, but not so much that it uh that that, that it steals focus. Um, and yes. it, it is kind of a send off for St. Cloud, Billy and Pete, like they're not going to factor into the rest of the season very much. You know, they're going to be Billy present. Gets that episode. Bill, Billy has the one where he takes the suppository and I don't know why I've only seen season seven once, but him just being like, then my bot was like, I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that line is just stuck in my head. And is, is that the forecast manufacturer where he's, yeah, yeah. that's not yeah. about him. He's just, he just factories in like, this is a focus episode for them. Oh yeah. Like yeah. It, it is less of a focus, but he still plays a major part in that as doc sidekick. Yes. Uh, and as somebody who puts a suppository in and describes <laughs> how a suppository, how a butt just gets hungry for suppositories. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, um, so. Oh, who doggy. Uh, <laughs> Production details. Uh, sometimes there are just these magical scripts that, uh, by page count, should have been way over, but come in right right at time. This was a thirty-eight mm-hmm. page script that they didn't have to cut down really at all. Uh, so you're kind of seeing everything as it was intended. Mm-hmm. Uh, commentary is back to a little bit of sniping. Yeah, you know, for people watching the commentary, uh, watch uh, Jackson uh, kind of starts by being a little bit pissy about how many character, how many backgrounds. Yeah. Doc wanted in the script uh, because it takes place over a day. They go all over. They have establishing shots. They have day and night shots. Uh, Doc fires back with, uh, well, the background's all like beautiful. The animation looks like sucky. Uh, <laughs> and it's very awkward. Yeah. Uh, to me, I, I just, boy, it's like the commentaries are not as fun to listen to in this season. No, it's like not, now's not the time to do, maybe have that conversation during production. Say, hey, yeah. is there a way to write around this establishing shot if we can? <laughs> it's not true that they didn't, but it feels like this is the only time they're talking. Yeah. <laughs> like they got they built up this head of steam of being mad at each other and then got together to like 
hash it out for the first time yeah here like they revisit the the making the joke about the fashion designer they do yeah uh, again in this like it just it is very petty shit mm-hmm. uh, a little awkward did you understand yeah. why they were hesitant to make a joke about dave grohl i, I think just because uh how it would fit into the world maybe like i don't think that they were yeah like it would just be cheesy or whatever yeah is my guess. This is uh there's a day roll joke. They talk about how initially they were hesitant, but then it was pulled off. Yeah. Um, yeah. This the, is when Dave Grohl was like first flexing his like I'm a a legend muscles I to mean, get not, people to do things. This this is four years after Sonic Highways. <laughs> it's really important to underline that. <laughs> like this well, what, is this is Dave Grohl well past his or well 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 past even that point. That, yeah. that that low nadir. I guess that's true. Yeah, uh, it's before the novel. <laughs> it, it, it's before his biography came out. It's before like and and the Rick Rolling, like to me the peak embarrassing mm-hmm. Dave Grohl. Did I tell you that we're gonna use that image from that shirt and make a Modred shirt? So it's Dave Grohl facing to the left, and then it says the name of our band, and then in quotes under it says the only bad song is the one you didn't write with quotations <laughs> like Dave Grohl said it. <laughs> this is the official first official piece of merch we're gonna have for the band. Oh, that's really good. Uh, other than Dave, just because, and like Andrew is a lawyer, so okay. he's hesitant about it. Uh, but I'm just gonna go have them made because I'll just go to a t-shirt place and have them made, and then Dave Roll will never find out, right? Because right. of course he won't. The, 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 uh, the, the, and t- the t-shirt, like five of them. The t-shirt place might not do it. They, oh, they'll do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done. I've had copyright images made on T-shirts. Okay, from this place, Big Frog T-shirts will do anything. <laughs> this is the place where the guy was at the computer and had the the pussy JPEGs. Oh, fun! Yeah, yeah I forgot like about he's, that he's guy. Not, yeah, the, 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 I hope the, he's doing good. The, the, these aren't the people who uh, you sent you sent them the tiny puppets to get to get stuff made for your tiny puppets birthday party, and they're like, and no, they, we 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 <laughs> can't we can't we can't do the Muppet Babies. Can, and can you're you like, please prove that you own the Muppet Babies. <laughs> <laughs> no um, <laughs> also these aren't the muppet babies i assure yeah. you they're legally distinct <laughs> uh no that was uh that was like vistaprint or something or not oh. vistaprint that was vistaprint because vistaprint did it vistaprint made me my mouse pad <laughs> and stuff but another company wouldn't do that okay um, <laughs> big frog t-shirt will do anything i'm pretty sure <laughs> the big big frog t-shirt is hungry <laughs> Yeah, big, big, uh, COVID probably hasn't been super good to Big Frog T-shirt. And I don't think they're going to turn down my like 70 bucks for five right. T-shirts. Yeah. And I'm making fun of Dave Grohl's uh, glasses look. <laughs> you put on glasses to show the time had passed. <laughs> um, it ends up being like the joke does not. It's real weird because they repeat the joke in the commentary. Yeah. And that's the joke. It is. It is the joke. It's it's yeah. the, the, the joke in the episode itself is fine. It would be not fine if Dave Grohl did a guest voice. No, it wouldn't. Because then it would be like The Simpsons where Monarch goes, Dave Grohl? <laughs> and then, you know, Dave Grohl, the legendary drummer? And then he'd be like, hey, Simpsons. Like, he'd yeah. awkwardly introduce himself like that always happened. Um, my, my, the fact that it's just plastic surgery is okay. Yeah. Um, my, my favorite one of those bad Simpsons introductions, uh, it's, uh, Neil Gaiman, uh, does a guest spot in an episode where the, like Homer, one of them wants to write like a YA series, you know, like, oh, let's get on the mm-hmm. Harry, pa- pa- Harry Potter action. And they meet Neil Gaiman. Uh, and Lisa says, Neil Gaiman, writer of Sandman volume one preludes and nocturnes. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't tell if it was intentional. Uh, good God. <laughs> yeah he, he, sonic highways huh uh, yeah i i forget that every time i'm told but mm-hmm. god that's good that that is I, I know i'm talking about the band a lot it's because of because we spent a lot of time making fun of dick girl yes uh but sonic highways are the kind of thing that we say to each other as a joke before practice like uh-huh yeah hey do you want do you want to uh what do you think about this uh these audio shapes I've been experimenting with. Then yeah. we just play a regular song, like a non fucking weirdo. No, the, the, the concept is even more annoying than that. Like it's recorded in, in, in studios and like a whole bunch of different places around America. Oh yeah. 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 And they, they, they made that. the HBO series about it in, in indefensible. And I, again, go to bat for far more Foo Fighters music than I ought to. 
<laughs> yeah, you're like I'm not. I'm not saying this as a, a specific violence to you. No, no, no. Like, I, I, I'm uh, not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stand for sonic highways in the way that I would say. Oh, there, there are some. Uh, the, the, there's, there's some real bangers on wasting light, right? Mm-hmm. When I'm like the world's, you know, or a really, really big fan of Ariel Pink, and he was at the Capitol insurrection. <laughs> So like that's way worse than <laughs> yeah I was gonna say you know that's that's actionably harmful where Dave Grohl is just like a fucking embarrassing rock uncle yeah it's just you know, d- at this point just 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 a doofus it's fine he's on the Paul McCartney like embarrassment train yeah you know like he's he's one album away from having a, a record that comes out exclusively at Starbucks <laughs> he's one album away from having from simply having a wonderful Christmas time yes he's he's on his way i do it the the first uh paul mccartney album all one of my all-time favorite like not a joke i just find it very funny the first paul mccartney starbucks album is called memory almost full oh, and all i can think about is paul mccartney saying that like gripping his head <laughs> <laughs> like no dog or something i've been around too long oh no <laughs> memory almost full <laughs> he's just he's just really really struggling oh <laughs> Uh, anywho anywho <laughs> uh, another fun thing from the commentary um uh, I, I like this idea doc talks about how fun it would be to do a spinoff series about enzo uh the uh the super villain taylor yeah this is the first episode where i like i bought what the boys see in enzo yes i was like yeah that is a good idea mm-hmm. that is really sweet uh, let's get into it. Let's do. We have a cold open that is just a part of the opening scene. Um, we mm-hmm. have 21 and the Monarch entering this guild facility uh, that is in this seemingly abandoned uh, subway station. Again, based on an actual building in New York. Uh, and they're yes. greeted by Watch and Ward. Yep. Uh, they ask if they had breakfast. They say no. They say good. And they have this drop away uh, Tower of Terror. In yeah. a moment, taking them out of the basement, which is, uh, again, looks like an abandoned subway. The first part is a house hmm. initially upstairs, a real house. Yeah. They talk about And the stand, the subway stations are real as well, but they're not connected. I R R L. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they start introducing them to different rooms, like different doors there. Uh, and they say, you know, every, behind every door is the future of organized villainy. They open one and there is a big shit monster taking a shit. Yes. It's the ladies uh, room, not a lab. Yep. Uh, I says, close the door. There's a little bit of, you know, they say men's room and he said, the, the creature says, she says ladies room. Yes. A little gender joke that gets real awkward on the commentary. Yeah. As well. Just a lot of, both, both of the boys just mumbling gender. Yeah. For like <laughs> seven <laughs> seconds. Like, it's really weird. Yeah. Uh, the, after the, uh, the opening stinger, it just continues, uh, yeah. with them kind of going back to the well with the, uh, you know, caffeination station. Yes thing uh this is watch and ward doing this for the guild mm-hmm. um they've got little initials for everything and they take them through these different rooms yeah so first we have the btc the blackmail training center <laughs> they, they open up the door they initially think it's another you know privacy mistake like oh you know because they walk into the super awkward scene these uh these sexy ladies you know seducing a man on a uh on, on a bed um and turns out no this is where they do like black widow red sparrow kind of yeah. trading kind of stuff you know, just like, yeah. oh, yeah, no, they're, so, they're, they're there to, you know, learn how to infiltrate and <laughs> watch us. And he has the job that I apply for every year. Yeah. Uh, just pretending to be seduced yes. by these ladies. Um, surgical Alteration Center. Uh, this is where they make undercover agents uh, replace the world's most powerful people. They reveal that it's Dave Grohl. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're confused that it's Dave Grohl until Watch and Ward say nobody can refuse Dave Grohl. He got a Beatle to be in his band and King Diamond. Do you try that? Yeah, uh, uh, yep. making reference to uh, something that nobody remembers, the 2002 uh, heavy metal project that he led um, called Probot. Uh, yeah, to, that he got King Diamond on. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. He, he, he just they were they were making one by one. The band burned out. And so Dave Grohl was like, fuck it, doing a side project. And he did one thing, which was um, uh, Probot, which nobody remembers. And he did another thing, which was drum on one of the best rock albums of all time, Songs for the Deaf. So it's uh, you can see the process of Doc Hammer writing this joke. Yeah. Like it's just him talking to his friends or something and being like, man, nobody tells Dave Grohl what to do Mm -hmm. like that guy, you know, I can't imagine that doc hammer is way into sonic highways. No. 
uh, something about that phrase makes me want to say it like Hank Hill, uh, but I, I can't imagine he's like a big fan, right. you know, he just knows this trivia fact and was like, whoa, yeah. you know, and then just incorporated it into the show. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. If, it, if it was less about like, hey, getting a Beatle to be on, you know, one of the lesser works of, of, of Foo Fighters and more just mm-hmm. like, oh, you try to say no to Dave Grohl. He seems real affable. Like, yeah, yeah. nobody would say no to him. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say no to him because he would ask if I wanted to hear his haikus because <laughs> have you seen that picture of him? Any picture of him really in the last like three years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ever, yeah. ever since he entered the, 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 the Kirsten cinema phase. I, uh, I was, the, that's a good way to put it. I was making fun of that album or that book cover on Twitter <laughs> and somebody was like pot and kettle black much. And I, I really like threw me. I was like, I had those. Mm-hmm. Like, I just want to talk. I'm not upset. I just want to talk to you about that. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a very different kind of dork than that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm a fat pasty dork, and, mm-hmm. and my skin's not always good. Like, make fun of me. For, like, that's I'm not the look to the left and, uh, it, the, you know, the, the, think about my sonic day. The, the 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 joke of the cover of the storyteller, which this podcast is about now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of material there, man. I don't understand how anybody can look at that picture and not feel like you can create a comedy career out of it. It's one of the funniest fucking things. The 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 the, right. the, the joke is the is the pomposity and like the trying to just uh, portray a certain sense of like understated uh, elder statesman sophistication. Yeah, you know, a pro- professorial guy who goes to his beach house to get his thinking done. Yeah. And like, that's where he writes. That's where inspiration comes to him. Yeah. It's like the, the guy I was talking on Twitter who like used to tweet, like taking a drive to my night spot. I find a lot of clarity there. Yeah. Uh, it's like that, but totally like unironically. Right. And from somebody who is so wealthy that they don't, there's nothing, no forces apply to get Dave Grohl. No. Like everything he does, he's choosing to do. So the book being called that and having that picture and everything, like nobody has power over him. Yeah. It's a hundred percent pure uncut Dave Grohl. It's, that he did that. it's such an unforced error because like he's written some amazing songs that has like, you know, a career that anybody would die for. And so yeah. to come out with that, like it's, it's a, it's a real, it's a real clang clanging note. Yeah. Yeah. It's just very funny to me. <laughs> uh, it, uh, next they go into the hypnosis training center. Uh, the, you know, the monarch and 21 say that it's fake, uh, but the mentalist character, mm-hmm. uh, puts them to sleep. Yeah. So he gets a line and, and gets to do a power for the first time. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then they have a mistake. They go into this room full of animals. They say it's the hologram training center. Uh, and then the animals turn out to be real. And yeah. this is actually the vicious animal training center. Nice. Um, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we really need to label these doors. Uh, they say, uh, and then the acronym jokes pay off. They get to the final step, which is this conference room. It's the guild in- initiation hub. And, and 21's like, isn't it the GIH? No. Why would it be that? <laughs> yeah, they're just having a bit of fun. Yeah. These guys, uh, they sit down, uh, you know, the, the monarch says he wants field work, you know, something that can raise his level. Yeah. Uh, and they say, you know, the biggest way is to be a big earner. Uh, mm-hmm. but you can also get some brownie points by joining the big villains program <laughs> mentor level one for a day. Mm-hmm. And the only little villain available is, uh, that day is St. Cloud. Yes. Uh, level one. And 21 points out saying like, Hey, you know, that's a, uh, he's the arch of, uh, you know, the, the big headed little guy, uh, you know, totally works for, you know, for, for venture. We, we, we got this. So they're enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. The monarch is so enthusiastic that he steps up, you know, stands up out of his chair and knocks 21 into the switch, turning on the light, deactivating the one way mirror, showing an interrogation room where Dr. Mrs. The monarch is, uh, uh, giving S four, six, four, the business. Yes. Yeah. Nice little uh, segue yeah. here. Uh, she's playing good cop. Mm-hmm. You know, you just uh, admit that you're with the peril partnership. You're a double agent by lunchtime, you know? Uh, and he says, you know, what if I don't? And she says, if, uh, if not, you get the tub and she does this monologue, uh, describes this torture yeah. uh, that can happen. You lay in a tub of milk and if you get hungry, you're fed honey. Uh, and he says, that sounds nice. And then she explains what would happen. Yeah. Uh, in real life, if you're just left in a tub of milk mm-hmm. with honey all over your face. Yeah. Uh, which is you would rot and verma would come in. This is um, an actual torture. I'm not going to click scaphism. I'm, I'm yeah, not going to click the, the boat. <laughs> I'm not going to click the link because I don't want to see images of that. Oh, there, there are uh, there are no images on the Wikipedia 
link at the very least. Yeah. Uh, uh, just, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, they, they luxuriate in the description, you know, talking about like, you know, if the, the itching sets in and, you know, every time you go to scratch the skin, you know, peels off, but you can't stop that kind of yeah. thing. And then it just, they're maggots and you're yeah. vomiting. It's, it's disgusting. Yeah. And uh, I just, I love how it ends. Then the rats, <laughs> then the, yeah, they just add in <laughs> some people. There's uh there's a show on Adult Swim called Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. Okay. Uh which is pretty hard to watch. Like it is it is trying to be unpleasant, mm -hmm. you know? Uh and uh but there funny things happen in it from time to time. Okay. Um there's an episode uh in it where uh, called Milk and Honey where they talk about this torture. Uh but the funny thing is there's a demon who sells used boats <laughs> that were used for this. Because it's usually not done in a tub. It used to be done in a boat. Okay. Um, the idea of selling the boats afterwards <laughs> is a very funny, like, cursed owner <laughs> kind of thing. Like, yeah, well, it was used for, well, do you know about the boat? You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you're not going to let the boat go to waste just because somebody yeah, rotted like, alive inside of it. A perfectly good boat. Just rinse that bad boy out. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but they're... Uh... <laughs> This is pretty persuasive. Uh, S four six four is going to uh, is, is is going to flip primarily uh, to get back with Kimberly Mc McManus, uh, not because of avoiding the you know the the, the tub. Yeah, he wants both. Yeah, uh, at this point, um, the uh, we cut over to twenty one and the Monarch. Uh, they've just landed on the X two, which is in New York Harbor. Um, and they're really impressed by St. Cloud's digs. Uh, yeah. They've got the, uh, he's got the X2. Uh, he's got Blue Thunder, uh, <laughs> which was a helicopter. It's a helicopter uh, movie. It's a helicopter, yeah, it was, helicopter yeah, movie. A, a crime solving boat kind of thing. <laughs> yep. You know, Roy Scheider flew that. Um, and we get a back and forth about Roy Scheider's secret six pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the dad from Jaws mm -hmm. uh, there. Um, St. Cloud comes out. Uh, and then the monarch is like, oh, you know, is your dad here or whatever? <laughs> and this is the, the bimbofication of St. Cloud. <laughs> uh, they, did you notice that? Like they've really made, cause he's always kind of like a, you know, you like yeah. a little, little baby boy, uh -huh. but they've really made him, <laughs> they really upped his little babiness. They, 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 they upped his babiness. They, they, they've upped his obliviousness. You know, mm -hmm. like this is the, I mean, this is not a St. Cloud who would make Billy, um, eat the pennies. No, the, the St. Cloud doesn't have, uh, intention. <laughs> no. Like he's, he's, he's just, just baby. Like, yeah. uh, they, you know, when they say this, he goes like, Oh goody, I'm already being hazed by my big villain. I wore my rubber panties just in case of tickles. I always make wee wee with tickles. <laughs> I, so St. Cloud, so th this is good. This is just me. P hate me for this. If you want to, if you're listening, this isn't how stupid St. Cloud is. No, he knows that, you know, he watched the, the Gilden, uh, orientation video. Mm -hmm. He's rich, but he's not an idiot. Yes. It's funny. I forgive it because it's, it's real funny. Like, I think this episode's real fun. Uh huh. You know, and they just, and I love the monarchs being like, are you fucking kidding me? Yep. <laughs> like, <'cause> it's, <laughs> it's pretty extreme. Yeah. You know, it's a lot. And, and just the both of them for the whole episode just be like Jesus fucking Christ uh -huh. and everything he says is makes me laugh mm -hmm. you know so it, it's fine because it's funny it is a characterization slip yes it's a the, the, the TV tropes would call it a Flandersization uh kind, yes. of, kind, of, kind of thing uh just because you end up uh like that like this is the Saint Cloud who schemes throughout all of Spanakopita right yeah he's he's yeah. tricked but like and everything he, he pisses did, himself yeah yeah. <laughs> He makes wee wee with tickles and he thinks the guild is going to send people to tickle him. Yes. You know, it's a, so. it's, it's, it's a, it's a bit of a slip. It's in service of a good joke and a good episode. So I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be forgiving to it. Same. Yeah. Same. Uh, and I'm also, I'm judging on a little bit of a season seven curve. Yes. You know, where it's like, I'm here to have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at this point, basically story, you know, the lore and the kind of deeper character stuff is not saying I'm, you're going to get tons of. Yeah. Uh, Rusty uh, walks downstairs to his lab. Um, he's got a box of donuts. He's brought crawlers <laughs> uh, and an apple fritter. That's mine. And two of the crawlers are mine. <laughs> uh, and Billy is hiding. Uh, he points a cock gun at him saying it's a laser gun. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I I mean, I'm a grown ass man. I cock things that I own. I will mm -hmm. still point the cock gun 
unloaded, of course, at my cats and go pew pew. They're cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same form factor as the sour cream gun from working at a Taco Bell when I was a teen. It's the, I mean, it's the, ex- it's the exact same device. Yeah. You can put cock or sour cream in it. <laughs> one for you, you know? one for me, one for yeah. you. <laughs> one for Greta, one for Dottie, one for Nicole. <laughs> Just like a, like a, a, what is it? What is it called? A Mexican standoff, <laughs> but with sour cream in each other's mouths. Everybody wins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man yeah. um but uh but pete and billy uh they are not on task uh because they have gotten a scroll declaring aggressive intent um mm-hmm. you know they're, they're they're terrified uh and rusty's like hey you know this it's is a scroll it's, it's a- like being scared of a book report <laughs> <laughs> and to demonstrate this he says oh brock we have a you know radios we have a level one arching threat i love brock's response so you want you want an aspirin or something <laughs> Brock's great in this episode. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I also, I really love Billy being like, I told him <laughs> like, Billy piece of shit uh, or not or Pete. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Being like I told him uh, Billy's not buying it though. He's like, hey, you know, where do you keep the cock? I got to load this bad boy. Uh, he's still scared. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, reasonable. You ever try to get cock out of clothes? I would like to not be cocked. Yeah. You know, L- less, less talk, more cock. <laughs> um, S-464 is signing the paperwork when Dr. Z burst in the room to be bad cop. Uh, just lovely little bit of Dr. Z business <laughs> that adds nothing to the plot. So you don't want to talk, punky pal? Yeah, you punky pal. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Mrs. the Monarch, you know, interrupts him. He's in the wrong room. Uh, and Dr. Z says, you know, he says he's agreed to work with us if we help him get his girlfriend back. And Dr. Z, Z says, you know, you don't need my super intimidating uh bad cop routine what you need is a makeover (laughs) Uh, and they do a little montage of trying on outfits that would hide the glass brain dome Uh and haircuts that would hide it including Uh, just just brock's mullet yeah very very cute little very uh simpsons you know when when lisa gets the new haircut Mm -hmm. um there's a bit in the commentary that clanged a little bit for me where doc hammer is like man this is the thing i don't like about this show is that in any other show we just actually have the characters do this Mm -hmm. but it's too unrealistic for us. Mm. No, like, I feel like you probably could have just done it. Yeah. I, you know, you, you, you bend these rules all the time, man. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. No, Dr. Z could have just done this, you know, instead, you know, this is just a little fantasy sequence in his head. I, I, I I like how he ends with, uh, with S four, six, four dressed as Adam and the ants. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, you know, they walked on this, if there's clueless references in here Yeah, and the ends he's, they're just like, we're not going to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, make, make I, it, make that, it real. You just, you just lose the, you lose the one liner from Dr. Girlfriends. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you, if you wanted it, yes. like I don't have, no, that's, I don't feel that strongly about the sequence one way or another, but nothing's mm-hmm. holding you back, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, inside the X2, uh, 21 is looking at St. Cloud's collection. He's got the Sigma and the sea monster suit. Mm hmm. The monarch makes a little dig at uh, 21, which I feel, feel like he wouldn't do. Again, mm-hmm. they're friends. He's like, I like his, you know, his albino. He's quiet. You should take notes. Yeah. The monarch doesn't want that. It's no. just, you know. Uh, St. Cloud comes out with his costume, which we've seen before. Uh, <laughs> the little lightning bolts on his hat. His foam core. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which, I, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 again, I feel like I'm talking about the about the skeleton xylophone. He could afford a better right helmet than that. Yeah, I, I do like that he just made it himself. Oh yeah, it's cute. You know, <laughs> uh, and they're asking if he has any powers or anything. Uh, and he, you know, he says no, but he does have lupus, fibromyalgia, and reckless restless leg syndrome. <laughs> Uh, and really good 21. Like we can work with that super restless leg syndrome. <laughs> I, I like, like how you said reckless leg syndrome. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> just crazy legs. Just yeah. bam, 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 bam. Uh, <laughs> kicking left and right. Yeah. Uh, restless leg syndrome. <laughs> but, uh, but he's got, uh, he's, he's, he's got problems. Uh, but you know, he says, you know, rightly, oh, my superpower is I have a lot of money. So they're just going to buy some, buy some weapons. They're like, okay, let's get some, uh, let, let's, uh, let's get some lightning, uh, lightning, uh, beam guns and also maybe some nerve gas. Uh, mm-hmm. but no level one, no nerve gas, just laughing gas. Yes. Uh, rusty, uh, Billy's in the bathroom and Rusty's like, you can't hide out there all the day. I've got all day. I've got a nervous bladder and full of crawlers. <laughs> Uh, he, le- he comes out, uh, and Brock shoots him with a paintball. Yep. The head. Uh, this is all part of a training, 
uh, ritual. Yeah, just uh, just just running through hell to just always be vigilant, right? You know, it could have been could have been a killbot with my voice. You know, boom, mm-hmm. you you walk. I out. made one of those. Yeah, his name was Gardo. <laughs> I love the Gardo callback. Yeah. <laughs> but then you know, maybe Brock, you know, says something a little bit more useful, which is never stand behind the door you open. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is which is pretty good and you know B- billy just he's got nothing he's just completely overwhelmed pete walks up but you know just kind of like walks through the door behind brock and brock just puts the points of the gun behind him and blind fires and hits pete it's like, <laughs> I, I love this he's like how do you know i was there billy looked at you now i have my back turned you're wounded you're not dead come at me come at me with a bladed <laughs> weapon and try to break my center of balance and the the timing on billy running away is really good oh pete just runs or pete. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, i keep mixing up this episode yeah uh pete running away yeah uh god brock is it both a good and terrible coach well yeah brock is a good coach billy and pete are very very bad students absolutely yeah uh a real another real life new york location this is uh tennis courts are on a roof Mm-hmm. Uh, of a gym in new york uh the monarch and 21 are coaching saint cloud through his entrance uh this huge cloud of purple smoke mm-hmm. um and his his line which i thought i hope you brought rubbers because a storm is coming yeah uh and they're like what do you, you know he's like those little rain booties yeah uh, <laughs> just like just don't improvise just for god's sake um and it's probably going to be pretty hard to you know seriously improvise because the fog that they have is pineapple flavor this is a good anecdote from the commentary i do like this doc hammer talking about the goth show that he played where the smoke machine you know it was far from menacing because the the fog was uh was was pineapple scented and how menacing can you be like that's that's a a good anecdote it ends up making it feel uh so somebody who has uh some experience with fog machines mm-hmm. i've owned in my day three or four fog machines uh scented fog or smoke is not the normal mm-hmm. thing uh, or flavored for certain like fog juice has a specific scent and mm-hmm. it kind of tastes bad because it gets in your lungs it's nasty mm, it's like propylene it's glycol not... is what it is it's like uh it's the same stuff that's in like vapes and uh snow globes yeah 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 it's it's unpleasant but it doesn't taste like fruit mm-hmm you know, I don't know. This felt to me a little bit like uh, taking a specific incident that mm-hmm. was the outlier and expanding it yeah. to a general thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe I am wrong about that. Like, it's possible just all of my fog experience. But <laughs> fog, you know, as somebody who's been through tons of haunted houses. Yeah. You know, been in bands that use fog machines, have been through uh, yard haunted houses and decorations that use fog machines. I've breathed in a lot of fog. Yeah. I still think none it's a, of it is a fruit. It's a fun anecdote of just like a goth band trying to be goth, but it smells like a pina colada. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is, that is a funny thing that happened to doc, <laughs> you know, um, uh, they, they try and get St. Cloud to get in practice his, uh, his, his evil laugh, but he just kind of does a creepy little mumble. Uh, then <laughs> in, <laughs> stop putting that weird groan at the end. Oh, well, it's a little good. orgasm moan he does at the end. It's so good. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh the uh this is where they have the uh the monarch you know demonstrates his good evil laugh mm-hmm. you know to, to kind of contrast here the saint cloud's horrible one yeah. uh hank walks into the apartment uh he's like, don't put on the kettle i'm not staying i just got to pick up my clubs <laughs> uh <laughs> really great little bit of business with hank yeah. uh billy's hiding behind the couch uh he's practicing you know brock is training them and he's cowering which is what he's good at and hank shoots him yeah uh, he's supposed to suspect everyone yeah so <laughs> love hank being game for this i'll shoot my mm-hmm. friend it's fine yeah of course yeah. it is um uh we we get 21 and uh, uh and everybody else 21 is driving them on the streets of new york in st cloud's car the batmobile uh this uh, is a fun man yeah, specifically the uh tim burton batmobile yes the, the cool batmobile <laughs> The, yeah, the super the long good one, not the horrible tank transformer Ugh, garbage God. batmobile that we have now i hate it um, the, the new batman has an okay batmobile okay it's, it's slightly better than than the horrible bat tank i think yeah, horrible cgi transforming bat tank no don't I care for fucking bat I, tank i I, no. I don't trust anybody who said that looked cool and a lot no. of people said it looked cool this, this incredibly phallic one that's like all engine for yep. no reason <laughs> like it's like a clown shoe it's i mean it's a dragster is what it is yeah yeah a dra- like with absolutely like an exaggerated dragster <laughs> where like you are 20 feet from the wheels that are turning <laughs> it's ridiculous yeah. ridiculous car 
uh but i like this little exchange you know 21 just you know geeking out just like he is over all of st cloud's collectibles uh, dude i so want this car and the heart's like i know you do buddy yeah <laughs> it's like of course you do yeah uh they're hazing him still they ask if he's ready to pull his first penis mm-hmm. <laughs> like he's like oh well, that's that sounds unappetizing yeah and you know they're just making this up on the spot yeah you know, he's like oh no no it's an ap- acronym it's a preliminary effective new information schooling like recon but you, you bust shit up yeah uh and they just keep getting saint cloud to say penis penis yeah. penis because yeah. uh, they think his voice is good as well yes yeah yeah it's fun to fun to get somebody to say penis yeah uh in a little guild van watch and ward are hacking the osi system because the osi don't change their passcodes mm-hmm. um they uh they find all this matrix code um that is kimberly mcmanus and they're yeah. like oh yeah she's a looker we can tell because that's melt in your mouth code <laughs> uh turns out she's working daycare uh just covering level one arches right um at this point yeah and uh saint cloud is the only arch that's happened in this day that's level one yep so this is where these two plot lines are going to not really collide but graze off of each other a little bit yes yeah, yeah. uh so she figures hey we can um we can sabotage this they put it in order for these lightning guns uh just upgrade the lightning rifle from level one to level six that way both s464 and mcmanus need to intervene on a treaty violation yes uh dovetailing well with the the treaty episode yes here i don't really like somebody pointing out uh isn't that dangerous and her going like we're the bad guys own it gentlemen yeah it's like a mic drop moment but it doesn't feel like dr mrs the monarch it doesn't feel like the same one that negotiated the treaty right um given so i don't really like that line i like the plot yes the plot the plot is good and the plot is i think a really good use of guild uh of 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 guild minutia you know of the bylaws and stuff yeah absolutely you know, it just, I bought it when Dr. Mrs. The Monarch cared about these things mm-hmm. in the, in the treaty. Yes. You know, like she, she believes in the game. Mm-hmm. She's not the monarch. She doesn't not care if civilians just die. She knows things will get worse. Yeah. It, it, you know? I'd, I'd believe it a little bit more if she, um, if, if she talked to, if she used it to say like, oh yeah, no, this is, we're going to stop the peril partnership kind of deal. Like, I hate those yeah. guys, you know? Yeah, this is worth it, you know, for the greater good or whatever. Yeah. It's just weird that she just kind of like mic drops about it. Yes. Um, um, <laughs> I love this, but though. this is great. So uh, the penis they were pulling, uh, you know, 21, the monarch in St. Cloud, uh, was to uh, go over to Billy's apartment, uh, you know, where he lives with his mom and with uh, and with Colonel Gentleman. Uh, and Colonel Gentleman is just sitting there in an armchair reading an actual book about needlepoints. Mm-hmm. It is uh, the Rosie Greer Needlepoint book. <laughs> Roosevelt Greer, the uh, actor, singer, and Protestant mil- uh, minister and yeah. former professional football player. Yeah. Uh, a real thing. I like this anecdote as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Doc's dad had this yeah. when guys were having a sensitive moment. <laughs> it, needle point. it was a real, real 70s thing. Uh, everybody doing needle, needle point and uh, macrame. Yeah. Yeah, very cute. <laughs> um, anything Colonel Gen- Gen- Colonel Gentleman's interior life is just my favorite thing in the show. <laughs> like he, he's he's the only person in the like in, in the okay o- outside of Brock. If you consider Brock's cars his hobby, he's one of the only like adults in the show who actually has a hobby or yeah. enge- engages with like non professional, non interpersonal activities. We're always seeing him doing stuff with his dog. Uh, mm-hmm. he, you know his fixation on television. You know, tracking the Sabrina the Teenage Witch uh, uh, Salem cat changes and yeah. stuff. I just, I, I love that detail that they put into Colonel Gentleman. I, God, I, I love Colonel Gentleman. It's so good. <laughs> and just him watching St. Cloud just kind of like just, just bumble his way through this window. He's <laughs> like, oh, you picked the wrong house, laddie. <laughs> uh, you know, he cracks his knuckles and he, he uh, when he says he's there to arch Billy Quizboy, uh, Colonel Gentleman calls in Rose. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is your son's arch. Uh, and she's just, you know, you don't mess with her, Billy. Mama bear wants a slice. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says, uh, cracks her knuckles and says, I'll let you take the first swing. If you don't put me down, I'll beat the living shit out of you until my arthritis kicks in. And I just took my Humera. It's so good. It's <laughs> really like, great. Yeah. Uh, just the fact that she is this former hero, but she still has this incredibly strong mama bear instinct. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> love it. Oh, uh, but she she 
beats him so hard that St. Cloud has to wear makeup to cover the bruises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beats the crap out of him. Yeah. Uh, While this is happening, uh, the PY uh, flies past Ventec Tower and leaves uh, Mm Skyrites. I will get you Maruhaha. Yeah. And they recognize the Maruhaha as how the monarch does an evil laugh. In text. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, in, in text specifically, Brock kind of goes, you know, he's like, you think that's a coincidence? Mm-hmm. And Rusty uh, realizes, no, this is personal. Yeah. So th- this gets Rusty engaged. He's no longer writing this off. Like, okay, now it's now we got to deal with this. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, we, we go back to the harbor. Uh, St. Cloud has worn orange makeup to cover this up. Uh, his beating, you know, and, uh, you know, you look like, uh, who's the, the fashion guy? Oh, um, uh, Mike something. It, it didn't make sense to me in the, the first joke of it. I didn't know who that was. Yeah. But you look like that guy, Michael Kor. Con? Michael Kors. Kors. Yeah. Kors. Yeah. Michael Kors as an Oompa Loompa. Yeah. Um, he comes out and they demonstrate what six figures buys you at the company store. Uh, and it's this level one lightning rifle. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a weird little bit of business here in the commentary too, where Doc complains about it. He's like, this should have been spinning. Mm-hmm. And Jackson's like, there wasn't anything about spinning in your notes. He's like, yeah, I just, I, w- I just wanted to look cool and just kind of trails off. <laughs> yeah. It's excruciating to me. The, yeah. the, the commentaries are getting very awkward. Yeah. Uh, for me to listen to. It's, it's, it's rough and it's rough not to have it inform uh, some of the, so it, like, it's fine. It would have been fine if I didn't know that it was this yeah. weird point of conflict. Yeah. I wish I didn't, you know, and I, I'm listening because we're off book mm-hmm. and I want to, you know, I want to know these little behind the scenes details. Yeah. Uh, I just wish I could read transcripts of them and didn't have to have this weird, yes, you know, and, and we don't know these two gentlemen. I know I've said mm-hmm. that before. It's worth mm-hmm. mentioning that. Like we could be overreacting to that. Yeah. It's just how it feels to, to me. Yeah. You know, could be wrong. Yep. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, after he shows off all these features on it, he throws, he throws the rifle at St. Cloud and he gets bowled over by it. Just yeah. Can't even catch it. Right. It's uh, important that he can't, uh, catch it because they say, give it a shot and he gets knocked <laughs> down and said, if he had tried it, it would have revealed that it's level six. Yes. It would completely fry the X two probably. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, over at Enzo's, uh, Rusty is trying to trying to set up his friends with, you know, some costumes for their big debut. Right. Um, they're all frustrated, though, uh, that the costumes are going to take four months to complete. Enzo is a bit of a uh, bit of a perfectionist. So they arrange for uh, for a last minute rental. Yes. Uh, you know, they, they can do it for Billy cause he's like a Bambino. Mm. Uh, and he's like, but as head, like mighty six meter man, <laughs> you know, uh, love it. Uh, Rusty's going to pay double. So they're able to get it. Yes. Uh, we cut over to the, where the arch is happening. McManus has blocked the road into Columbus circle. Uh, cause she said the engine died. Mm-hmm. Uh, the smoke starts to deploy and Dr. And Mrs. The monarch doesn't want to go watch because she's getting a $9 latte. Yeah. Uh, a joke from 1991. Yes. You know? you, it's called a cappuccino and you won't believe what they cost. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, uh, also ridiculous, but in a good way, the, the, the outfits that uh, they managed to rent for Pete and Billy uh, Pete's in the killer drone costume. <laughs> the, the killer drone costume is so good. Uh, it's so dorky. Uh, I love it. It's very funny. Billy doesn't want to come out, but they're like, come on, you know, uh, they, they had a uniform for him that was make him invincible. Uh, you know, from 1962 to puberty, Delta boy of Venus kicked ass in that costume. Uh, and he comes out, this is based on a real thing. Uh, this is the Grum man moon suit. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, which was a, the idea of a commercial spacesuit. Yeah. That was like in a life magazine or something, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is the most awkward looking thing. Just it, somebody's idea of what the future would be like. It looks like you're dressed up as a space station. <laughs> Like it in a full grown man, it it looks like a Halloween costume. If the theme of the party was places, why is there so much extra space in it? Is the thing? I don't know. Yeah. Like, is it so you can have you can double up? <laughs> I like, get a couple people in there. Yeah, you know, it, it's for Red Mantle and Dragoon. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's very bizarre. Yeah, uh, but I, this line, uh, one of my favorite lines, he comes out. And I love uh, Pete just being like, "You look like a can of Diet Pepsi." <laughs> It reminds me of Hank uh, looking at uh, Dean in his speed suit and saying, like Santa's magic janitor. <laughs> like, look at the mayor of Candyland. <laughs> yeah. It's and such Billy, a good insult. It's very good. 
<laughs> and also yeah. true based on <laughs> based on that costume uh and billy fire is back at least i don't look like the girl from the blind melon video yeah yeah the, cute reference the video for no rain have i told you my no rain anecdote uh tell me again in case uh i have forgotten <laughs> i was i was in college you know uh just li- lived in a little house on this you know really crowded busy street and it was like two in the morning and i woke up hearing from outside somebody from their car very loudly playing no rain over and over again Okay. Okay. Uh, this was a person, uh, it was a, it was a young woman who was blaring this and like yelling up at somebody in the house saying, you just need to cheer up. I'm playing this for you. Just listen to it. You're going to be fine. And like she was oh. trying, she was trying to cheer up her boyfriend by playing. Like no same way. Thing yeah. Kind of moment, but with, uh, Huh. But at 2 a.m. just playing Blind Melon's No Rain and shouting, you're going to make it through this. It's all right. That's incredible. <laughs> wow, <Wowie> zowie. <laughs> and that's yeah, a real short no. song, so it cycled several times. Yeah. <laughs> that That is, uh, so the, the guy uh, from the band Shannon Hoon. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. The, that, uh, that the, the main main person, uh, tragically. Yeah. 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 Tragically ended their own life. Uh my ex-wife was really into blind melon like into them before they were big Mm -hmm. and like it is always sad somebody you know when that happens right undeniable yeah it was it was a a moment a learning moment for me to realize how to like bring it in terms of compassion for something that i was not used to anybody expressing compassion about yes like seriously being affected by blind melon going away yeah yeah. Like, how do I deal with this? Like, this mm-hmm. is taking blind melon seriously on a level that like an artistic loss, as well as just it's being sad because it's sad when anybody goes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that can be, um, that can be a rough hurdle to get over initially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's tricky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, very funny. And basically doc did this. So they'd be invincible. Yes. Like these are high level suits. So they're mm-hmm. cheating as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, St. Cloud, he makes his opening shot thinking, okay, I'm going to fire this level one electric burst at them just to give them a show. Uh, but instead this hugely powerful lightning beam shoots out from in the middle of this gigantic purple cloud, uh, completely just like cutting through a bunch of statues on Columbus circle. Yeah. Uh, the, the team, the rest of the ventures don't notice this at this point. I was like, listen, Billy, it's, you know, it's level one It's a show. You just have to go out there and give a speech, blah, blah, blah. Good always tries o- triumphs over evil. I love this line so much. It's like, does it? And, and Brock's like, of course not. Now get out there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you fucking idiot? <laughs> no. Just, it's kayfabe. Come on. Yeah. Of course not. <laughs> uh, I love it so much. Great delivery. Yeah. Uh, St. Cloud emerges from the smoke. They're very proud because he's facing the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's like, you're kind of, oh, I see you brought your albino. How cowardly. I didn't bring mine. <laughs> he's like, people don't own albinos. <laughs> eat dart st cloud and he turns around and just kind of like grunts because he doesn't know how to shoot the stinger off yep uh, really well observed yeah Real also like stuff. like how would you aim something that you had to you know shoot by pointing your butt yeah yeah it's ridiculous <laughs> very uh very funny a little bit of business yeah uh while this is happening over on the other side uh mcmanus walks over to dr miss the monarch saying like hey did you see that lightning gun we need to shut this down uh and she's disgusted to see that uh s464 is here Yes. Uh, St. Cloud pulls out the gas grenades and drops them, ends up gassing himself. And the crew, everyone gets debilitated. Uh, they fire off the gun, but they're uh, not really aiming at each other at this point. They're just kind of giggling. Yeah. And laughing gas. Uh, McManus is going on about, you know, the peril partnership has no honor, etc. And Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch loses patience with her because she says, who are you? Oh, yeah. Uh, and then Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch is like, you're some guild nobody. Uh I found this to be a frustrating bit of dissonance in the episode to the commentary. So, uh, and the fandom, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is, I'm going to sit back and call everybody wrong. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mrs. The Monarch gets really upset and yeah. not as an act, not as kayfabe says like, you know, uh, I don't even care that he did all this and staged all this, uh, because he loves you, you know, and this is the thing that breaks through to McManus. And she's like, Oh, you did this for me, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's really mad though. Yeah. And she's, uh, to me, I don't think Dr. M- Mrs. The Monarch would be this upset. I think she knows how to put a plan together. Uh huh. I think she knows this is, this is how it works. She doesn't have a temper yeah. like this. She can do kayfabe 
for the moment. She mm-hmm. didn't lose her temper when the uh, wide whales guards mm-hmm. were being sexist and hitting on her, but her just being like, I'm going to, I'm going to kick your fat trucker ass. Yeah. Uh, and McManus comes out of nowhere. Yeah. She, her composure generally is better than this. Way and it, better. And it, and it feels like it's like, this is setting up the like nice moments of, you know, the monarch, uh, and her yeah. kind of having like the, the, you know, just like a little bit of like a, you know, a nicer exchange than they've had, you know, just like the, like the nice moment of support, but, uh, to, to get there, it is doing stuff that feels counter to her character. Yeah. It, it, I mean, that's exactly what it's doing is setting up that moment, but it's still unearned as shit. Yeah. You know? And then, so the fans, when they first saw this, they were like, oh, she's pregnant, which is also a silly they, overreaction. They've done that so many times. That that has and, happened. And t- <laughs> to be fair, the, the the creators did have oh they did a have very the, the specific pregnancy, pregnancy fake, out. fake out cliff yeah cliffhanger thing yeah. yeah like they they did set that up but also so then on the commentary Doc is like oh these these guys are being idiots they have to check themselves they just think anytime a woman shows emotion she must be pregnant mm-hmm. and like they're wrong but they they're reacting to you writing this character out of character yeah they think something's up because you did a bad job with this Mm -hmm. moment. It's not them who are, you know, solely responsible for this. It being a very frustrating moment. Like love this episode, but I, I just feel like we're getting so many character slips in this part that it's starting to add up Mm -hmm. for me. It's, it's been a more common occurrence this season. Now that, now that we're looking at it more closely. And then the experience of listening to the commentaries, which are also kind of tense and hearing like just a lot of pride about it. Yeah. You know, he's, he's just very, you know, he's, he's proud of the latte joke. Mm-hmm. You know, he does, does a latte joke. He's like, yeah, that's, I, t- this is a lazy joke, but I fucking sold it. Yeah. And, and, then, and then like, it's just, it's not a great joke. Yeah. You know, it's not a huge deal, but it's weird to, to wear it like a bandage of honor yep. to me. You know, I, I kind of hate this moment with the, with Dr. Mrs. The Monarch. I don't associate her with this at all. No. Um, you know, the Monarch comes up and stops her from beating up this, you know, as OSI agent who doesn't mm-hmm. know her name. Uh, and she, you know, she thanks him. She's like, thanks. You saved my life. And he goes, no, I saved your job. I saved that woman's life. You would have kicked her ass. You know, it's this little sweet moment of support. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we get a post credits that um, they had to improvise because the one that they had planned initially, had to, like they had to scrap well, they it didn't for know some how reason. Long yeah. Oh yeah, they, they didn't know how long it would uh, take to yeah get through all this. So we have Pete and Billy um, kind of telling their tale of this arching to Hank and Dean, and they're embellishing everything. You know, they basically say like, "Oh, they were kicking his rib cage like it was Goodfellas." You know, get your, get your shine, your shine box? box, Saint Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 real good, and the two of them just playing off of each other. All of this is improvised so that they you know could, 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 could get enough material there, and it cuts inside. You know, Brock's like, "Hey, weren't you going to tell them they were hallucinating on nitrous?" And we found the three of them asleep in a little <laughs> in a pile, big, little pile, <laughs> in a little pile is such good, is such That's a good so phrase. Cute. <laughs> Because they're so, like two of them are little guys, yeah, you know, like little little cuddle kittens, uh-huh. and then uh, Pete could just kind of surround them like a parentheses, uh huh, you know, it's like just, a mama dog. It's, it's, yeah, I can really see it, like the Hal logo, uh, with, exactly, uh, with the <laughs> eggs, cloud, <laughs> Billy has eggs. <laughs> oh God, a little pile. I just think I just think of a bunch of baby hamsters and a little just in, in some uh, in some uh, you know uh, paper shavings. Ah, oh, it's so good. Yeah, uh, it's very very cute little ending. He's like, when are you going to tell him? He goes, never. And he's going to save their ego. Yes. And 100% inconsequential uh, episode that is just a lot of fun business, even if the characterization slips. Yeah. Left and right. I just, I like this. It, it, it like, this is also like the, the one of these, um, uh, like elaborate titles that makes sense. Like, yeah. You know, uh, oh yeah, just like the, this is a proxy fight between Rusty and uh, and the Monarch, and it's played and, out, you know, with these with these buffoons. Yeah, yeah and bellicose means aggressive or mm-hmm. given to like aggression, like it is an aggressive. You know, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't feel as showy offy yeah. as some of them do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, as the Rourke roll officer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, um, yeah, it's a good episode. Mm-hmm. Really fun, really funny. Same thing with the next episode. Yeah. Which I, I think is inconsequential, but funny, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and that's, that does tons for me. 
Yeah. Like I ultimately at the end of the day, like I want this character stuff. I care about it. It's what separates the show mm-hmm. for me. I also like joking. Joking's good. So, um, yeah, but we're, we're in the home stretch here, folks. Yep. This is, we've crossed the halfway point now of the season. Yeah. So just a seven, eight, nine and 10 left. Mm-hmm. Thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, now would be about the time to start writing in. If you have thoughts about season seven, um, mm-hmm. you know, plan is wrap up, you know, this season, bring the show off of ice when we return for the movie. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And, uh, we already have an idea of what we're going to do after this, uh, you yeah. know, to kind of replace the show on the network. Yeah. It's like, we're excited about mm-hmm. your mileage may vary, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be cool. Uh, do all those things and, uh, tell your friends, support us. And most of all, Go Team Venture!